It's another adventure in Northwest Ontario. This time, we're at the end of the road in Pickle Lake, and where the road ends, the otter takes off. We're heading to Birch Bark Lodge, which is supposed to be a fabulous fishery for walleye, or locally pickerel, and of course, big northern pike. So chances are, when this thing lands, we're gonna be catching lots and lots of fish. If you've never been on one of these trips in Northwest Ontario, a fly-in, from here to basically the middle of nowhere to recharge your battery to catch pike and walleye, you need to get on one of these adventures. There's nothing better to recharge that mental battery. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Want these to go down? Yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. yep, no problem. What weighs the most here? Battery. <laughs> yeah. Birch Park Lodge is about 75 to 80 air miles north and east of Pickle Lake. And Pickle Lake, Ontario is it's as far as you can drive. That's where the tower ends. And uh, so it's, it's pretty remote. It's about a 45 to an hour flight with the otter. So basically the lodge uh, sits right on the Pinamuta River just before it goes into Wigwasins Lake. The lake is called the Wigwasins Lake and basically what it is, it's a shallow depression of the Pinamuta River. The Pinamuta River is 250 miles long, so there's always lots of cold, clean water that's flowing through here and it's, uh, it just continues on down to uh, through some native villages 50, 60 miles away. We named it Birch Bark Lodge. Actually, Kim, my wife, came up with it, uh, the name Wigwasins. We did some research and she found out that it means birch bark or birch tree, so we named it Birch Bark Lodge. Can't wait. Can't wait. Well, it had always been a dream of mine to, you know, someday own a lodge and I, you know, always had an interest in hunting and fishing and so we just decided that we got to a point in our lives that that's what we were going to do. We were going to go forward and, and uh, take the leap. We're just a small uh, family run. We're housekeeping and American plan. So usually when your group comes up, if it's a group of four even, you may have the whole place to yourself. So we've just got two cabins. We're just actually on the river before it comes into the lake and it's just a real quiet setting and very nice. So we're just exploring the water after we landed at Birch Park Lodge and looking at the lake from the air and the information we have, this is a giant river system. Our game plan right now is to start trolling, looking at the river channel. It's early fall, so my guess is oh, going to be, oh, one. well that didn't take long. <laughs> my guess is going to be the fish are going to be in the middle of the river and obviously Ty just hooked up walleye probably. Probably a walleye. And if we can find, uh, the deal is if we can find a bunch of walleyes, chances are there's going to be some big pike there. So right now the mission is trolling. Looking for life, and Ty's already scored. Safe flying into Canada is a good, good call. Nice. Yeah, nice thing about searching for these big pike in, in a lake like this, that's full of walleyes, is you get these bonus walleyes in between, which makes it fun too, right? Yep. Nice rock pile here, Ty. Lure choices right now for us is Ty's got on the classic bait, walleye bait of all time. It's the uh, the shad wrap, a number seven shad wrap, and then I'm fishing a real tight line. I've got a deep down tail dancer, and this is a, a great bait for river fishing. A lot of people use this for open water trolling walleyes. It could get down really, really deep. What I like about it is the efficiency of this bait. So rather than making a long cast, I can just literally flip this thing out. If I'm fishing eight, nine feet of water, flip it out like that far, and the bait's dive curve is so steep that I'm cranking on bottom right basically right underneath the boat and the fish don't seem to care up here at all so it's a really efficient tool for covering water and the other thing I like about that tail dancer is the way that it runs if I get into the rocks it, it just deflects and walks over rocks incredibly well you know to tie in what Jeremy is saying there I mean he's so he's oh just missed one he's actually real close to the boat I'm further out the nice thing with that too we're making a lot of turns we're going back and forth on the skinny river system we don't have to worry about getting tangled up right so it's, it's a really efficient way to fish. There's a fish. Good boy. 
What do you think it is? What kind of That's critter? That's probably a walleye. Walt or... Coming up. It's a walleye. A lot of walleyes in this system. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people, when they come up to Canada, it's usually jigs, plastics, which is a great technique, obviously, but crankbaits, they just kind of leave them at home, and it's just, I think it's a, a big mistake, because it's, it's a what, lot of catch. What a great way to learn water. I mean, yeah. when you're learning, covering water, putting the motor in gear, and just going, so much more efficient than us just trying to drift this river channel, jigging it. And... Ooh, yeah. Nice fish. Just another nice walleye. It just seems like, Jared, it seems like we're, as soon as we find those rocks, we're finding walleyes every single time. Those walleyes are just keener on those rocks. And there's a lot of them. Oh no, not another one, Jer. Okay. <laughs> doubles, 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 doubles. So when you can catch fish, no matter what you're throwing out, you know there's a lot of fish in the body of water, right? Oh, oh doubles. <laughs> Coming up to these places wow. just amazes me every single time. The amount of fish that you catch. Coming to a Canada and doing a trip like this, you gotta kinda prepare, be smart about what you pack. So when we get back to camp, I'll show you the list of equipment that we pack to do a Canadian pike and walleye adventure and have the right tools to catch lots of <laughs> lots of doubles like this. Cool, it's beautiful. See you, dude. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. When it comes to packing and equipment for your Canadian flying trip, you have to keep in mind that there's weight restrictions on the float planes that you use to access these waters. So you want to be smart about how you pack. You don't need a ton of stuff, but you need to have, of course, the right stuff. So let's start with walleyes. And I like to make sure, always with walleye fishing, to have a good selection of crankbaits. You can see here, I knew this is a river system. I brought the classic Rappel account down, a great river bait. I brought floaters and storm thunder sticks. I've got the shad wrap, which is a must-have, husky jerks, and then of course tail dancers are a great bait, and that'll cover a wide spectrum of depths that we might fish. In addition, I packed a straight 100 jigs for a trip like this. Oftentimes you're dealing with a lot of pike, a lot of bite-offs, and you can be dealing with rocks, so it's, it's nothing to go through a ton of jigs in a day of fishing. And for the back of jigs, we can keep it pretty simple. Twisters, you know, I, I, lo I just love these three-inch big bite grubs a straight minnow profile or a paddle tail. We like the jointed jerk minnow and the jointed swimming minnow for those styles of baits. And then when we get into the pike side of things, it's, it's really the same thing. I want crankbaits. The Rappel is super shad. It happens to be one of my all-time favorite big fish lures. This also catches tons of walleye. Lipless crankbaits, spinner baits. I pack some BX swimmers, some swimming minnow style baits, and then of course the big spinners. You can never ever go pike or musky fishing without the, the famous inline spinner and of course a safety pin spinner. This happens to be one of the most effective tools there is for covering weeds. When it comes to rod selection on a trip like this, really keep it simple and choose rods that you can be really versatile with. So on, on the walleye side, my favorite action, if I'm gonna be jigging and doing some trolling, is the 610 medium extra fast action. It's a dynamite jig rod, but it also works great for trolling crankbaits. It's, it's just got the right action to do a lot of things and you can be really versatile with it. So I'll spool that with the size 25 reel. This happens to be a Dio Ballistic on a St. Croix Legend Elite. This is uh, about the, the sickest rod and reel you're ever gonna have in your hand. It makes it a joy to fish. Now on the pike side of things, I'm going right to my bass tackle. This is St. Croix's seven foot, 11 heavy fast action. It's a moderate fast action and you can fish just, well, you can fish every single lure that I bring for pike extremely well on this combo. The reel I've got on here is Daiwa's Lexa HD 300. This is a must-have reel. This is the finest reel that I've ever fished pike or muskies with, and I'll bet you any of the professional guides at musky fish would tell you the same thing. So, but if you've got a six foot 10, medium, extra fast rod, and a 711 to eight foot heavy action rod, you can cover every presentation there is to do on a flying like this. Lastly, some other things to keep in mind is line. I always bring plenty of backup line. I bring for walleye fishing, I've got a spool of 10 pound Suffix 832. I brought another spool of Suffix 832 and 40 pound for the pike fishing. And then it's nice to have from 10 to 20 pound fluorocarbon up here. We're using 14 and even 20 for our walleye fishing applications just to save our crankbaits. And when you're pike fishing, 
you got to have wire, of course. They're going to bite through whatever. So if you pack for a trip like this, you pack tackle like that, you'll be golden. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. When you talk about gear when you're coming up to Northwest Ontario, you're on a float plane, you're in a smaller boat. You gotta have things like a net still, and a net like Stowmaster that actually stows and tacks away and you can put it, get it out of the way. I mean, this thing is still has a big enough net where you can put a 20 plus pound northern in it. So this is a key product to bring. Another product that uh, people don't necessarily think about, but coolers, right? So a box cooler is not a perfect situation here because of size and the space. So Yeti came out with a hopper cooler. It's a soft-sided cooler. And you could put up to 24 waters or pops in this thing and a five pound bag of ice. Another thing is this cooler is very stowable. You can put this anywhere, get it out of your way. Perfect product for going on a fly out. You know, we're primarily trolling on this on this trip here, but we just got into a little tight spot. Obviously there's a rapids and it's a little too tight to troll around and to fish efficiently. I think everybody knows you want to have a trolling motor. So on this trip, we packed Minn Kota's half horsepower electric outboard. This is just, it's got a lot of efficiency. It works great on the square transom of these Lund boats. And in addition, I've got the trolling motor battery center down here, which is great. If we needed to plug in any accessories, we've got it. I can test the battery life and then for my helix an additional you know an additional charge we've got everything so it just makes makes fishing a lot easier especially in tight spots like this to pack a trolling motor and a battery you'll be happy you have it on the trip oh nice this walleye. one they're all nice right right and the average size walleye premium is like that that might be nice Not a bad one, Ty. Came up a rock pile. Too bad. Yeah, take those all day long, right? The flat stick. Boy, it's amazing how, you know, you, you gotta experiment with stuff all the time. But these big crankbaits up here, fall, of course, is a classic time for the big fish, big bait deal. And it is so true up here. When we switched, you know, we started walleye fishing when we switched this pike deal, we went with big baits. And we're catching more walleyes and pike, you know, yeah. on the big lures than we were, you know, the shad wraps and all that kind of stuff. So it's cool. Lots and lots and lots and lots of pike and walleyes. One of the most important pieces of equipment to have on the water, whether you're on a fly-in like we are now and the fish are practically jumping in the boat or you're fishing pressured waters, of course, electronics. And what we brought on this trip is the Helix 5. This is the same unit that I use for ice fishing, but I've just got a little bracket on the back that I mount for the transducer and it gives me a map and it also gives me, of course, sonar. But the big deal for this trip is we brought with a Zero Lines SD card. Gives me a very detailed line or outline of the lake. So this is something that's totally huge to have. It gives me the confidence to go explore new parts of the lake that I nor normally wouldn't have with just a paper map or running off something that looked like I was just in the middle of nowhere on the GPS. So when you come up to a place like this, be sure you bring electronics. And I'd strongly recommend like a Helix 5 with the Zero Lines SD card, it's going to make your exploration a lot safer and a lot more fun. Gosh, this is a nice looking spot. There's got to be a big critter living around here somewhere. See, so there's a big walleye. Oh, this is a bigger fish. I took a good one, huh? Stand down. I'll back this up. I'll put it in neutral at least. Yeah, heavy. 
really heavy. Catch some oh, oh, nice big walleye. walleye. Huge nice walleye. walleye. Holy man. Whoa. That's a step bigger. That's that thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that queen Whoa. to come showing up. Yeah, that's a big Look fish. Look at that. What a beautiful walleye. Northwest Ontario Birch Bark Lodge, huh? Sweet. That's a big fish, man. Long I had no idea there was that big of walleyes up here. Oh, no. They said they got some big ones in the spring, but... Uh, Long lining, big baits is really paying off. Man, I mean, we're catching, the number of fish that we're catching in the size is just, I mean, it's straight up incredible. Look at the size of that bait we're using. We're using pike and, uh, pike and muskie baits for walleyes. I mean, that's just crazy. Hold that thing horizontal one. What a beautiful fish. Bad. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. There's big pike in the system, we know that, so we're gonna we're gonna try to target them for a while. For trolling pike, there's a couple baits that I really rely on. One one is spinners, whether it's safety pin or an inline spinner like the blue fox super boo. This is crazy. We we're fishing walleyes and then we switch to pike and we're catching like the catching has not slowed down for walleyes. And then the other bait I just love is the super shad. I mean just pretty much anything that swims is willing to bite. This bait right here, don't forget the super shads. And so if we're around weeds, we're gonna be fishing primarily with the spinners. I'd like I catch muskies on this thing, we're drilling walleyes, this is cool. But when you get into more of this rock and sand stuff, that's the zone where I really like to pick up the super shad or another one is a, a giant flat stick. Beautiful. Something that's got a little more range and depth. So I'm running that bait down in about eight, nine feet. With any, whether you're trolling a spinner or you're trolling a crankbait, flatline trolling, it absolutely pays to work the rod. Rather than just cast it out and hold it like this, you'll catch fish. But pumping it, dropping it back, it's just a dynamite way to trigger fish. So that's really all there is to it. Put the motor in gear, drive around, you know, two and a half, three miles an hour, pump the rod, and big things will happen. Wow, whoa. That's a, that's a big one. Huh? I think that's a big fish that right there. That's a big bike there. He that, hammered that Yeah, that, that feels good. It's going to go easy. I got it neutral. Super shad. Yeah, this feels like real big. Big fish, huh? Yeah. Sweet here. It's going to go easy. Our pattern right now seems to be there's fish when the river meets either big bays or now we're coming into the big part of the lake. and. So a lot, this lake is so shallow, the only deep water is really, really the river channel in late fall like this. Deep water is usually a magical deal. Stay hooked, buddy. Just want to get a look at this thing at least. Wow! Oh, look at this! Wow! Thing. Holy cow! Oh. Yes! <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> wow! This is like one of the biggest northerns I've ever caught in my life. I'm not kidding. Whoa, it's bending the net. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And it came out, wow. Yeah, wow. Oh, wow. You guys aren't going to believe this. Check this out. Wow. Hey, if you've never done a fly-in Canadian adventure where you've got opportunities at catching lots of fish and giants like this one, check it out, man. It's awesome. I'm so glad we went to Birch Park. Unbelievable. <laughs> Do you enjoy your job? <laughs> I'd like to hear all of the answers. <laughs> uh, I, I just finished reading a book called Every Good Endeavor. And what really caught my attention, and obviously you could see all the, the spots that I tabbed in there, a lot of things caught my attention in this book, but it said connecting your work to God's work. And then when I went into the beginning of the book, here's what the author had to say, and I said, I gotta buy this book and go through this. <clears throat> I'm giving biblical perspectives on such pressing questions as what is the purpose of work? How can I find meaning and serve customers in a cutthroat, bottom line oriented workplace? How can I use my skills in a vocation that has meaning and purpose? Can I stay true to my values and still advance in my field? How do I make the difficult choices that must be made in the course of a successful career? 
when I read those questions, I said, I need answers to all of those. I want to see what the dude has to say. say. And, uh, uh, you, you know, God's Word, the Bible, has really a lot to say about work. He's interested in our day-in, day-out life, and that's what the Word of God is about. It's not all about the hereafter life. A whole lot of it is about the life that we live today. He wants us to be happy in our work, to be joyful in our work, to take your God-given talents, God-given gifts that we all have, and apply them in a field or something that is exciting where we get some satisfaction out of it, some self-satisfaction. And God's Word says a lot about it. And there's one scripture that I've read many times over the years that I thought kind of really drives home the point. And it's in Ecclesiastes. Now, Ecclesiastes is believed by biblical scholars to be written by Solomon in his latter days. And Solomon is considered one of the wisest people that have ever lived. And in Ecclesiastes 3, uh, uh, 12 and 13, let me read it to you. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives, and also that every man should eat, drink, and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Again, I asked you that one, one quick question just a little bit earlier. Do you enjoy your job? God wants you to enjoy your work, to get self-satisfaction out of it, and through your work, give glory and honor to Him when it's appropriate in the things you do. We all have God-given talents, and when we apply them in a field that uh, uh, we want to be in, I believe He'll bless our work. I just have to share that story with you. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good fishing season. We'll see you on the water. <laughs>